Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Show. I'm Jerry Horner and I'm president of the Bella Vista Garden Club. And uh, with me today is Vera Martin, and Vera Martin is also in the Bella Vista Garden Club, and she's also one of the board of directors of the Bella Vista Living Memory Garden. And today we're going to be talking about the garden a little bit. Um, we're starting off the new year with a new set. We have a new set today, and we have a new audience. I understand since the uh, Channel 16 has gone digital. It's the Bella Vista Community Television Station is now going to be shown on channel 222 and we're going to be shown all from Bentonville all the way down to Fayetteville now. So we welcome our new uh, viewers and we hope you enjoy the programs that we have uh, set up for the year. And of course with this month we're going to be talking about the Living Memory Garden and there's not much to do in January for gardening. But the Living Memory Garden is kind of a year-round project that uh, Vera is involved with. Mm -hmm. And um, if you want to tell us a little bit about the garden. Sure. Uh, the Garden Club started in, uh, the Living Memory Garden started in 1979. It is, I'll tell you where it is, most people can't find it, but you know where the country club is. You, <clears throat> well, let's start, start from town center, go to 340 West, and it'll be two streets in the country club. You go down the country club, and that will tell you where to go. Uh, you'll just follow it. And our living memory garden is all the trees that line the parking area, two different places there. It, <coughs> excuse me. And anyway, that's the way to find it. Uh, just look at all the flowers and the trees and the bushes, and you'll know that it's uh, our garden. That's right across the street from the country club. Yeah, the country club and the golf club, too. And the golf course. Golf course, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Golf course is there also. As I said, we started it in 1979, so some of the trees are about 30 years old now. But unfortunately, we had a hard freeze one day, one last winter, I think it was, and we had to um, transplant a lot of flowers, and so we have some different flowers. The azaleas froze, and sometimes we have storms like we've just had and a tree, couple trees got knocked down and uh, so we have to replace those. So that's what the living part of the living memory garden is all about. We keep working, uh, making everything to continue to live and that's our, our major, major goal of it. Right. Well, I'm always interested in the history of it and how it started. This fascinates me that our little Joe Hackett that was a member of our garden club is the one that came up with this garden. So can you tell us how she came up with this? Yeah, she was, uh, well, before this all started, it was just a big hill, slanted hill, and she saw people trying to mow out there, and she said, they're going to get killed. And uh, so she had a dream and an idea came to her to make a garden out of it, and that's how this actually all started, as I said, 30 years ago. Uh, Joe was the benefactor in all of it. She really... Um, worked with the POA and uh, so it, it came up with the fact that the POA would take care of it for us and we would be in charge of getting the donations that would uh, help bring the money in so that we can keep this garden living. It's, uh, the idea, her idea was that it would be, it'd be in honor of anyone or in memory. So if you donate money you can just think about this, people are still there sometimes. Right. Okay. And she, I know she went to the POA and to the, um, the Garden Club to maintain this. Now the, the Garden Club administers everything and the POA maintains the garden basically. Right, right. And then after someone donates, they put the, um, the donation, um, in a, they calligraphy it into a book and that's at yeah. the, um, at the country the club. Country club, yeah. As you go just in the front right. door up to the right of the country club, there's a book that lists all the people that have donated. And um, we're on our fourth book, I think, Four now. Four books now. Oh, it's so, just uh, wonderful. But yeah, it's I'd, such a great way to, you know, uh, honor someone's birthday or anniversary or wedding right. or, you know, memorials. We have a lot of memorials that are given. We did have some pictures to show, but I'm not coming up with any picture on my laptop here. So, You'll have to go to our website, um, bellavistagardenclub.com, and our pictures will be on the website of our Living Memory Garden. If you just go on the left side of our, um, our website, we have a directory, and you can get there um, with our, our directory there. Um, we the other thing, we have other activities in the garden from now yeah. on, from then, you know, once in a while. 
Yeah, we do different things. Uh, our, we had the, the airplane painters, they're called. Anyway, they came and just sat in our pretty trees. We have a lot of evergreens. We have a lot of uh, <coughs> flowering uh, red buds and dogwoods. I think there's about- Beautiful azaleas. Yeah, five or six different trees. And so they painted those, which was one of the pictures we were going to show you. Well, when Joe Hackett was 100 years old, we celebrated her 100th birthday at the Garden Club, and we planted a pink dogwood in mm -hmm, her honor. Mm -hmm. And I think that dogwood's doing well, isn't it? I think it's, yeah, okay. it's still doing fine. So the main thing is to go by the garden and um, different times of the year. It's not just in the spring or the summer, because in the winter they put lights up at Christmas, and mm -hmm, the lights are just mm -hmm. beautiful. I think they're down now in January. They probably but are, but. If you get by the garden <coughs> in different times of the year, you will see um, different um, views. Yeah. And it's the one thing you really have to look for is a statue that uh, Joe Higginbotham, the daughter of Joe Hackett, uh, donated to our Living Memory Garden in um, <coughs> uh, 2009. 2009. April of 2009. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's just beautiful. And she's called uh, Garden Sense and uh, has a little basket. It's like a little girl going out to look and pick up some flowers. So uh, it's, it's a really beautiful piece. And, and we had a wonderful celebration. Yeah, um, we did. I wish we had more people time. had been there. It was a rainy day, but we had um, a rainy balloon maker, we had popcorn, and we had um, 30, it was a 30th 30 anniversary. Doves. Mm -hmm. We had 30 white doves that we released, and it was so cute to see the little kids holding the little doves, and then we all released them at the same time. It was just a fun um, fun thing. And I know when they had the plein air painters there, one of our members, Kathy Wason, mm -hmm. painted a beautiful picture of the garden, and that's, that's on our, that'll be on our website too. I'll have okay. those posted on the okay. website. But she did a, a painting there. <coughs> the plein air painters paint outside, and they, um, they only paint out in the outdoors. So mm -hmm. the weather has mm -hmm. to be pretty good when they yeah. do that. Yeah. So. Right. Um, well, the one thing that I want to tell you about the, the living garden, we do have brochures. And we have them on display at the uh, country club, and there's a wall rack there. And in this, there is a place for you to donate. And your tells you uh, tells us how we want the memory or honor of all the information we need. And down at the bottom happens to be my name. I am the treasurer, and you would send it to me, and it will go into our files, and you will receive a thank you and who you're honoring will receive a thank you so that everyone knows that you have donated it. Right. And we, we really appreciate the help we can get to keep this garden growing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think we just had a crawl on, the, on there to show where to send the money. Um, and I, there is also information on our website. Yeah. You know, if you didn't get that written down, um, we can, you can go to the web, our website and uh, Maybe we can give the number us. at the end. And we can name. They're showing it again. So we have um, oh, okay. the address that they can send the donations. Um, and I know quite a few of our members, um, all of our members are on the board, or all the board members are members of the Garden Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell us who's on the board right now yeah. of the Living Memory Garden? Okay, uh, Wanda Schrader, Betty Hahn, uh, Mary Doyle, and me, and uh, Janet. Uh, Christman, Crossman, Crossman. Um, we just kind of to rotate our jobs so we do whatever we can do, whatever is our good, what do I want to say, we can do the best we do it. So that's uh, how we do it. And then our, our Garden Club president is always present on our board too. So right. Yeah, it's a wonderful organization. And we so. do have some people, if we have need, others come and help us. <coughs> Well, there's really not too much else going on in the uh, wintertime um, with gardening. Uh, it's probably just a good time to, to get a cup of tea or hot chocolate and get catalogs <laughs> yeah. and curl up and see what kind of plants you want to put in your garden. Uh, the other thing that is going on in January is the Benton County Master Gardener classes are held in January. And they have the classes are going on starting the um, first part of January. And so a lot of the members of this class are um, from Crystal Bridges, trail guides. Uh, Crystal Bridges is going to be <coughs> opening finally. Uh, we have a, we're so excited. We have an opening date of November 11th, and um, they were, are going to have trail guides in their gardens and all their trails along the, the uh, property, and they are all going to be master gardeners. So they're in master gardener training now, 
and so they're going to be ready uh, when the garden opens. I don't know if they're going to have the trail guides in um, working in the, the summer yet or, or when they're going to be starting, but they're going to be trained uh, as master gardeners to show all the different plants. There's so many wonderful yeah. native plants that they preserved, and they're doing a wonderful job in the gardens there. So in addition to being a, a, an art museum, it's going to be a, a wonderful garden setting. So we have um, um, our Meet the Masters program that is uh, set up by the Master Gardeners. And every month at our meeting, we have a little DVD showing uh, one of our Master Gardeners in their garden. And this month, we have chosen, we're going to show those um, in our program here to share. And today, today, we're going to be showing Lorene Terry's garden. And Lorene Terry is also a member of the Garden Club. She's been a member for over 25 years, yes, yes, yes. and she lives in Bella Vista with her husband, Joe Beggs, and the DVD you're going to see is um, uh, introduced by, she's, her garden's being introduced by Gwen Kerr. So let's enjoy a visit to Lorraine's garden. Lorraine has been a master gardener for 10 years now, this is not the first home she has owned in Bella Vista. I toured the gardens of her first home and thought they were lovely, but being here today and seeing her gardens and what she has accomplished in the short amount of time she has lived here is just outstanding. Lorraine has been a mentor to many of us, and I see Lorraine standing over there now. So why don't we go talk to her and see what words of wisdom she can share with us. I've lived here since 2002 house was finished in late 2001. We started the gardens as soon as the weather broke in 2002. The biggest problem I've had here started out with the red clay that was brought in to raise the uh, backyard up. Uh, they proceeded to raise it, but not enough, but then they tracked with their tractor, they spread the red clay all over the backyard. That's been a problem. Uh, but uh, I think I've mastered it. I've tried to go up over it, and it's working now with shallow root things. I would say that my favorite season would have to be spring because uh, it's so interesting. Uh, you'll walk out every morning, and you'll see something popping out of the ground when you have stuff like I have. It's like three layers deep, you know. So that would be, springtime would be my favorite. I grew up in northeast Arkansas. My dad had a quite a large farm there. And in the springtime, we didn't well, we didn't have they didn't have lawns like they have now, you know. It was just yards. Uh, the daffodils would come up in the early spring and we just called them Easter lilies. And I just loved them. And I, I've always remembered they're still one of my favorites. My favorite perennial, I think, is the uh, iris because they, the, the beautiful blossoms they have. I have selected my iris. I used to grow lots of iris in uh, my other place out here and out on my ranch place. But now I just have a select, maybe a dozen, that I have selected. And, and I select them for their blossoms and their, and their color. And then I would have to say daylilies. And again, it's for their blossoms. And if I don't like the looks of something, I, it doesn't bother me at all to take it out. <laughs> like my rose behind me, <laughs> it has uh, a witch's broom. And I've been fighting that, and I know I'm going to have to lose it. But uh, in the past, it has been just a cascading mound of roses. But I'm going, it's going to have to go, so. Lorraine, is this the witch's broom you were talking about is on your rose? Yes, it is. This is the witch broom, and it's a real witch, witch broom. It started last year. Uh, we treated it. We cut all the limbs out of it. We tried to sterilize the soil. We poured buckets of strong fungicide all around it. But it's back. This year it's back, and it's worse. I don't know anything to do for it, so I guess I'm going to have to take it out. But actually, the little tiny 
blossoms are really kind of sweet um, until you know what they are. I think one of my favorite catalogs is Dutch Gardens because uh, they, well, they stand by their stuff. You know, they don't ever have any problem getting a replacement. Uh, they also come in like threes or whatever, and I can uh, hand some of them off to friends and stuff. So uh, that's my favorite. But I do get things at Walmart, and uh, I go to Westwood too, but that's a little out of my way, but I go to Westwood. And they have nice things. In fact, I bought uh, two or three things this spring from Westwood. Well, Garden City, actually, well, one reason I have a 25% off card with them, and I've had it since the beginning of time, and it only cost me $25 a year. And I think they'd like me to default <laughs> so they could get it back, but I've had it so long. See, when they first opened, I'm talking way back, when they first opened, I bought a green card, and it was $25. And that's all I pay for it every year. <laughs> they don't like it, I don't imagine, but that's what it cost me. I guess the one thing I could tell you about myself that I doubt very few of my associates now would, would uh, get is that I am an AI technician, licensed AI technician, that's artificial insemination. And I did all of the breeding on, uh, we raised registered Angus, you know, out in the Aboka area of Sugar Creek. And I did all of the disseminating of our uh, prize cattle and got our new bulls and heifers from that. And uh, I, I had the class at the University of Arkansas, and there were 20 veterinarians in this class and me. <laughs> So they had a pretty good ride on uh, letting me step up to the plate first. And, <laughs> and you know, everything else goes, so you have to clean the cow out, you know. <laughs> so they, um, they enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. So it was fun. And I think I finished higher in the class than they did. <laughs> uh. It's always so fun to see a garden in the winter because it's so dreary right now. And Lorene's got such a beautiful garden. She's got plantitis, actually. <laughs> she plants so many plants, and she's got so many uh, flowers and in bloom all the time. So she's really a character. And I've always enjoyed uh, visiting her gardens. And so, and we're going to be having uh, Meet the Masters programs. Um, through the rest of the year. We try to, to share our gardens uh, with uh, the community. And um, the other things that we're going to be going to, to do this year for the Garden Club, we will be continuing on with our garden seminars. We had gardening seminars last year we started. And after selling thousands of plants to people over the years, we decided it's time we tell them how to grow their plants or how to, you know, what to do in their gardens. So we're having gardening seminars twice a year, and those are free to the public. We'll be talking about that in the future programs. That's usually in April. And of course, our plant sale is the first Saturday of May. And this year, it's May 7th. So um, we've had our plant sale at Tanyer Creek for a number of years. And you've been involved in the plant oh, yeah. sales we've for had, a number of years. We have a big crowd. They're there by 8 o'clock or yeah, 6 o'clock sometimes. They're ready so, to, uh, to buy plants uh, yes, they are. when they we are. have our plant sale. And they all come from our gardens. So Most we, of the yeah. plants come actually from our gardens. We share our perennials, and, and then we grow some herbs. And, and we do get some nursery uh, plants, but not very many. But it's guaranteed that they'll grow in our area because um, they came from our gardens and they're hardy and they go through these frosts and these freezes. Then on June 4th, we're going to have our garden walk. Uh, we, every other year we have a garden walk 
And this year we have, I believe, six gardens on our garden walk. That's going to be on June 4th. So you might want to mark your calendar for that. Now the garden, excuse me, the garden club uh, meetings are starting up again in January. We took a little hiatus in the fall. And January 26th is our first meeting. It's the fourth Wednesday of the month. We meet at the um, United Lutheran Church on Cooper Road and Forest Hills. And we start gathering about 11.30 and we have a little uh, luncheon, light luncheon that the members provide at 12. Then we have our meeting and our program. And we always welcome guests to come. The January meeting is our scholarship presentations. Yes, presentation, right. Now, have you been involved with the scholarship? One um, year, yes. You mm -hmm. were on the board. <coughs> and we have, <coughs> we have uh, scholarships that go to the Northwest Arkansas Community mm -hmm. College horticulture students. They don't have a whole lot of classes there in horticulture, but there's a few uh, landscaping classes they have. And so we try to um, provide two, scholarships. We have two or three. Two. Usually we have two. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how many we have this year. They come to our January meeting and, and uh, it's really fun to meet them because usually we're really helping them finish their education. They've started it and they run out of money. And so um, this And several of them deal. have have gone to um, um, to students that have come back. They've been in the workforce and they decide to go back into the um, into the community. Right. So no, the one thing about the meetings that you mentioned we need to talk about, it. you don't have to be a Master Gardener to come. Uh, master Gardener is just another, <clears throat> like the Living Memory Garden, it's another part of it. Another element. Most, I am not a Master Gardener and most of yeah. us aren't, but we are really... But we have, I think, 16 of our yeah. 123 members are Master Gardeners. And we yes. have another uh, member that's going through the class now. Beth uh, Castle's going through our class, the Master Gardener class, right now. but. Um, we that don't go through Master Gardeners depend on them for all the names <laughs> of all the plants. We try to help. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, but anyway, we're hoping that uh, our new year will be uh, started off with a, a good, um, uh, good program and uh, with our and scholarships. Be sure and come because you learn something. I mean, even if you don't, you just learn things. You that know, you're always, every yeah, day you learn something, you learn something about something. gardening. No matter how much you know, there's always something to learn. And when you stop learning, that's when they just close the casket. <laughs> you have to keep learning and just, you know, absorb all that information. And sometimes with conversation, you learn other things that are Related. in the community that it's really interesting to know where to that's go right. to get this and that's right. who's got good fertilizer and who's got this and right. that. So it's just very informative yeah. just to learn these so things. So anyone can come to our meetings and uh, we've, we've, um, Increased our membership quite a bit in the past year, so we have and we have a lot of projects going. And if we have men, our, and we have men in our in our uh, garden club. I think we have eight men that are in yeah. the garden club now. So some are couples. We have some couples in there. So if you go to the, our website, bellavistagardenclub.com, you'll find all the information there. And um, we're hoping that you've enjoyed the program, and you'll come back and and see um, our future programs. And um, we thank you for all the information, Vera, on the Living Memory Garden. Thank you. And until next month, I hope you've enjoyed the program. And don't forget to stop and smell the roses. <laughs>